Traverse City, Michigan, and, and we didn't have a lot planned for today, concrete things. We heard about a guy that lives 20 miles south of town, so we hear he's got maybe a Hudson and a few old buildings with cars. So that's where we're heading now. Well, I was kind of sad. We drove out here to Kingsley, south of Traverse City. We heard about this field of cars and barns. Sounded perfect. So we pull up there and I saw old cars. So I go talk to the neighbor and the neighbor said, well, the man that owns that property and all those cars, he's in Florida. They didn't come back up this year because he's not doing well health-wise. He had heart attacks and strokes. I said, well, can I just go over and peek at those cars? He said, don't peek at those cars. The police will be here in 10 minutes. So. Everything we wanted was right there within 50 feet of where we were and we couldn't go there. So, you know, you win some, you lose some. So we're on our way to find out about some muscle cars that are maybe in a building in Kingsley, right in the middle of town. So, wish us luck. Well, we've struck out twice today. Twice we found great places with great cars, and twice we've had owners that tell us they wouldn't give us permission to uh, go in there and film. So, now we're gonna go check out another place we had heard about, and hopefully this owner will give us permission to uh, look at his cars. Hmm. This is what I'm talking about. Wow, finally we have some luck today. Some old cars that people are allowing us to look at. Hmm, Volvos, I see a Saab. Well, let's take a look at this stuff. This is a, a desirable car, a 122 wagon. All I know is wagons are very desirable. They have great motors, lots of torque. They have a, a, a B18 engine, 1800 cc's, push rod motor, torquey motor, strong engines, strong gearboxes. This this is how Volvo got their you know their their name, their reputation. Now being a safe car, being a sturdy car, being a reliable car, it's it's the reputation they built up from way back in these days. It started out there's a 544 Volvo over here. This was the Volvo of the 50s, and a 544, you know, is is uh, it looks like an old Ford. It looks like a uh, 1948 Ford, and it's probably no surprise there that after World War II, when Europe was trying to build up their industries again, get back in business, well, Volvo probably saw a 1948 Ford as a, an inspirational car and copied it. So it's very similar to it, although much smaller. It's only got a four cylinder. We were told by the owner that this is a running driving car, that the gentleman who he got it from cut the roof out. So the roof is actually screwed in right here. but. The roof is cut out and he would go hunting with this car and he would drive it into a field and then park the car and then have his gun ready, stick out of, stand up in the passenger seat. This is a 544 sedan. Uh, the earlier one was called a 444. This is a little bit later one. It had a B16 engine in it. So we have sort of B1800 over there, B1600 over here. This is a variation of the 544. I believe this is called a 545. And that's a, a wagon version of the 544 that we just saw. It's a two-door plus the tailgate opens. And if I'm not mistaken, this was known as a uh, three-quarter ton vehicle. It was, it was not a passenger car. It was a three-quarter ton delivery vehicle. Uh, so if you look at my Woody and look at this, you know, when, when guys were looking for surf wagons and couldn't find Woodies, uh, a 544, 545 Volvo did just as well. You can see how much room there is. I mean, you can see why a, a, a surfer would want this. Put your boards on there. You could put your sleeping bag down in here and uh, just camp out right on, at the beach. Let's take a look at the one over here. It's a Saab 96 wagon. I think this one probably has a V4. Uh, let's see. Oh, look at this, okay. Yes, it's got a V4. 
It's front wheel drive. Saab was really, you know, one of the first companies to use front wheel drive. That's a V4 Ford industrial motor. That engine, two cylinders on this side, one, two, two on the other side. It was never made by Ford to be a passenger car engine. It was made to power pumps and generators, uh, industrial applications like that. And, and Saab needed an engine to, because their two cylinder, uh, two stroke, three cylinder engine had become outdated. It smoked a lot, and you've, if you've ever seen one drive by, you'll never forget it. It goes ring, 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 when you shift gears. So Saab needed to replace that motor, and the easiest way to do that, rather than develop their own engine, was to buy an engine from Ford, and they bought those as industrial motors. These cars had four-speed gearboxes, four-speed on the tree, or four-speed on the column. Hope that doesn't jump out at me here. But it's got a four-speed on a column, and this car is loaded down with parts, trim, uh, extra seats. I think I should call the guy and see if we can go in the garages. We can look in here as well. Okay, this is worth coming to. Ah. Uh huh. Okay, so this is like another Volvo. This is like a Swedish junkyard, indoor junkyard. This is great. Uh, I don't pay attention to square Volvos. I consider that a square Volvo and that a square Volvo. Now this is not a Volvo. If I'm not mistaken, this is an Austin. This is a British car, uh, probably in 1950 or so. And it probably has a, a side valve four cylinder, let's see. Okay, so it's not a side valve. It's an overhead valve engine. It's an A-series motor, probably an 850 cc. This was a, uh, a car that many British race drivers started racing cars that were variations of this. Uh, back in, in the 50s, late 50s, you could buy one of these very cheaply in England, strip the body off, and build a special body, either out of aluminum or uh, fiberglass, and I think in a couple of case, occasions, wood and people began their racing careers with the drivetrains of this car, a little four-cylinder motor and a stick shift. They were, it was a lightweight race car, but these are neat cars by themselves. Probably 1951 with that plate in here. Now, if the taillights are the same as an MGTD. So British were famous for using parts out of parts bins. These are the same as a trunk uh, hinge on a Morris Minor. This is a nice little car. You never see these in the States. I don't even know if they were uh, imported here. Okay. Well, I think we bailed out a pretty good day. We started out slow. We heard about fines and they were actually there, but we didn't have permission to go and photograph them. So, but we finally found uh, a interesting fellow with a yard full of bubbles and Sobs, and even though you might be a Mopar guy or a Corvette guy, you know, these are old cars as well, and so uh, they're pretty cool. So keep your eyes open, ask lots of questions, keep your ears open. Happy hunting.